Good evening and welcome to the uh, North Idaho College Board of Trustees special meeting, October 12, 2021. We will uh, convene and uh, well, actually we're reconvening from executive session. We'll have a call to order. Uh, Mr. Lyons, would you please have a verification of the quorum, please? Mr. Chairman, all trustees are present. We have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Would everyone join me in doing the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please? To our custom at our normal board meetings, it is appropriate to continue on our special meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we go to the new business section of the meeting, we have an informational item of clinical placements uh, that had been scheduled at the end of the agenda. Um, I have spoke with Dr. Burns and with uh, Christy Doyle, and in light that we have some of the nursing students here tonight, they've agreed to, um, if we can have a motion, to move that up to the front of the agenda, and those folks can uh, get home to be studying sooner. So move. So move. Or I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Thank you, uh, Trustee Wood. Uh, I have a motion. I have a second. Is there any discussion or comment? Okay, if not, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I think Ken, I saw his mouth move. I think Ken, I saw you, but you might be muted. And Michael, I haven't heard you. Aye. Our test run. Ken, did you have yourself muted possibly? No, I said I. So I, I see your mouth moving, but I do not hear you. Well, I'm not Ken, muted. Did you nod your head yes if you voted yes? Well, I said yes. Michael, can you hear us? Yes, I heard him and I hear you. He said yes. Well, I know, but we need to make sure we have open communication with him. Mm -hmm. We had some challenges in the executive session. It took a little while to get there. Like it's almost like they're here. That's great. Oh, there we go. All right, everyone. We're just going to take a moment to make sure that Trustee Barnes can hear us and that he is able to respond. We have a number I of am here. Can you hear the me? agenda tonight, and there'll be votes. There was, say it again. Someone was saying something. I, I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes, Michael, that's you. I can hear you. Fine. Thank you. And right. I did say I. Maybe Ken did. And Ken, you can hear us okay, correct? I can hear you okay, yes. Oh, good. We hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Then let's go ahead and move forward and we'll discuss the informational item, uh, <clears throat> clinical placements. Um, Dr. Burns, would you like to start that? Yes. Thank you. Ch Chair Banducci, thank you. And we appreciate the opportunity to discuss the challenge of clinical placements. Um, it's interesting that we were just rebringing this before the board now in 2021, because I will be honest with you, having previously served as uh, the Director of Health Professions and Nursing since um, 2001 through 2010, clinical placements have been a challenge uh, for a very, very long time. And in fact, uh, around 2007, a consortium was formed to address uh, how to equitably uh, place students in all the facilities that need, uh, well, that the students need to attend to get the clinical experience that they need uh, to meet their learning outcomes in order to uh, be prepared and posed to uh, graduate, not only graduate from the college, but to be successful in um, passing their NCLEX exams, which allows them to become licensed uh, after they leave our programs. And so I'm not gonna go on and on because I have asked uh, Dean Christy Doyle, who is now serving as the Vice President for Instruction, messed up on the title, excuse me, Christy, um, to 
explain the situation as it relates to the impact that COVID has had on clinical placements. Thank you. Chair Banducci, members of the board, Dr. Burns, uh, good evening and thank you for allowing me to present on clinical placement at, at uh, NIC, specifically to the challenges we've had over the last several months. I am going to focus on the practical nursing program, the PN, and the associate's degree nursing, which is our RN program at this time. Um, I do want to mention, as Lita said, that we have struggled with um, clinical placement for many years. Um, and that is why we actually have capacity restrictions on our nursing programs. The added uh, challenge of COVID vaccination requirements has, has added to that complexity. Um, and I do apologize up front. Uh, there is a lot of information here that I do wanna present to you and it may seem lengthy, but clinical placement is a very complex situation for us. And we wanna make sure that you, as well as our community understand the challenges that come and that we are experiencing right now. Um, then I'm gonna start a little bit about clinical placement overall. Then I'm gonna to move to what's transpired since August, how we responded and where we are now. So as Dr. Burns mentioned, we are part of the Clinical Placement Northwest Consortia, CPNW. And that is a unique partnership um, with education institutions and healthcare systems the consortium was developed to help our acute care um, clinical partners offset the challenges of having to speak with multiple colleges and universities um, as they sought clinical placement openings. The consortium provides clinical placement management, meaning slots for each of the, uh, not only at the facilities, but also for the institutions. They allow us these specific slots and numbers of them, different units, that type of thing. Um, and they also help track all of our nationally accredited nursing programs in the Pacific Northwest. So that includes obviously Washington, but also um, Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, and the Lewiston area. We are all part of that consortium. For students, what it does is it provides them an onboarding uh, process and services with a standard set of requirements that all of the facilities that are participating in that require. So we're not having to do different uh, facility requirements based on those that are participating in the consortium. Uh, the CPNW facilities and the educational reps do meet every other month to review both the needs of the colleges and universities, but also the restrictions or issues that the hospitals might be facing, um, like for example, with COVID. And so they, they set these um, clinical slot placements like a year in advance, and then they meet every other month to review those on a regular basis. So there is constant conversation going on around that. Of our, of our NIC acute uh, care clinical facilities, six belong to the CPNW and three are non-CPNW sites. Only seven of the 31 facilities used by both programs are able to accommodate groups of four or more students at a time. And this is significant to understand because our clinical groups usually are four to six to eight students. So that's how we place our clinical groups. Facilities utilized for clinical experiences in the PM program are selected based on the type of experience the organization offers, the number of students that can uh, be placed at a time, and if the organization hires practical nurses. It's important that the facility has practical nurses on staff so our students are able to see how the PN role fits within the organizational structure. For the RM program, clinical facilities are selected according to similar criteria as I just described, except they're really focused primarily on the RN role within the organization. So what has transpired since August, and forgive me, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a timeline of events so you can understand the complexity of the things that we've been dealing with. Um, on June 10th, the CPNW facilities agreed that they did not believe their organizations were going to require COVID vaccinations. On August 9th, the Washington State Governor Inslee mandated all healthcare organizations require COVID vaccinations. On August 10th, Providence notified us of the required COVID vaccination, but the details they didn't have at that point in time, they were still working through that. On August 11th at the CPNW meeting, the Washington facilities didn't know the answers about whether or not declination forms for medical or religious exemptions would be accepted. When President Biden announced the federal mandate on September 9th, we really began to see Idaho facilities begin to question what they were going to do with both their employees, students, and our faculty. We saw confusion and continue to see some confusion around whether or not facilities will accept declinations 
whether they're going to be requiring COVID vaccinations and the processes by which we need to follow. On September 20th, NIC submitted declination forms to MultiCare. MultiCare notified us on October 11th. All declinations were accepted. On September 22nd, NIC submitted declination forms to the VA hospital. The VA hospital notified us on October 4th that they would not accept any declinations and students were notified on October 5th. NIC did not submit declination forms to Rehab Hospital Northwest or NIOCH, which is a North Idaho advanced care hospital, both of which are owned by the same company. And we did not um, submit those declination forms because we did not think that there were going to be COVID vaccination requirements because they were Idaho facilities. So we assumed that we would not need to do that. However, we were notified on October 7th um, that students would have to be vaccinated. No declinations would be accepted. And uh, we have verified, or we have requested verification, forgive me, um, just to be sure that that's accurate, which we have done all along. If we have received information, we have crosswalked and um, connected back with the facilities to make sure that, that we have met um, and understand the requirements. Um, we are still waiting for information from them, but we do anticipate that no declinations will be accepted by those two facilities because they do not accept flu um, declinations either. At this time, we believe any facility in Washington is likely going to require COVID vaccination. What we don't know is whether exemptions will be allowed. This continues to be of concern as we look to spring semester, given the number of clinical placements in Washington, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So for the practical nursing program, we have 18 students this year, uh, and they use 23 different facilities for clinical experiences. Four of the 23 facilities are able to accommodate four to eight students at a time. Two of the facilities are in Washington and two of them are in Idaho. Eastern State Hospital in Washington has provided the best opportunity to meet student outcomes around mental health for the last few years for the PM program specifically. Mental health experience has always been a challenge for finding adequate student placements. Kootenai Behavioral Health does not uh, currently hire practical nurses outside of the crisis center. Uh, the behavioral health program is also utilized by multiple um, registered nursing programs. So space is of concern for us for providing uh, those types of experiences at Kootenai Behavioral Health. We have reached out to um, outpatient and congregate care organizations, but have not found a local option yet that would provide experiences for students to meet the learning outcomes at this point. The remaining 19 facilities accept, excuse me, one or two students at a time for observational experiences only or for senior practicum experiences. Observational experience is exactly that. Students can do simple things like take vital signs and help with activities of daily living, but that's the limit of what they're able to do for that experience. They are there primarily to see the role of the nurse and observe what skills the nurse is able to perform. After receiving theory education behind the different skills, knowledge, and abilities, students uh, need to have and be able to demonstrate the technical skills for the first two semesters of the PM program. Students are then allowed to work under the direct supervision of a licensed practical nurse or an RN during the summer session, which is more of that one-on-one -on -one experience that they would be able to have during that, that summer session. Since the pandemic began, long-term care facilities have been hesitant to allow students to participate in clinical activities. Many of the facilities have asked that students not participate in clinical activities outside of their organization because of concern that students will unknowingly transmit COVID to their residents. So many of our students are working as CNAs at other facilities, and it is unreasonable to request that they resign to meet this type of requirement, but I will tell you there are some students who are doing exactly that. I also want to mention that students must be evaluated in their practice. So one-to-one -one student ratio, um, student faculty ratio would be an unreasonable accommodation given this is not a true perspective of working in the profession for our students. Not only that, there are honestly not enough resources fiscally or um, with faculty to be able to accommodate that. We are three uh, full-time faculty down right now in the nursing division, and we are struggling. And I was also told that we might have another one coming up by the end of December, so it is a concern for us. For the RN program, we have 158 students this semester. 21 different sites are utilized, and some of the sites are also utilized by the practical nursing program. 
Six of these sites are able to accept groups of students of eight at a time. Three of the uh, six sites are located in Washington and three are in Idaho. And I wanted to put together kind of an Excel spreadsheet for you all to kind of give you this rather than the narrative, but it, I just did not have time to put that together, but we are working on trying to provide you with a bit more information rather than just a narrative. So just be aware, we will catch you up on that. Um, so 84 of the students have been placed in Idaho facilities and 74 students are placed in Washington facilities. We have managed to provide placements for all but three first semester students who were scheduled to begin clinical rotations this week. There are 37 students in the first semester, 29 of these students are placed in Washington, and eight were actually placed at Rehab Hospital Northwest of NIACH, who I just mentioned Thanks, uh, informed us last Hi, week. Michael, you may need to mute yourself. Uh, that is not me. I was muted. Okay, thank you. I didn't know who it was. Sorry. I apologize. I keep going. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just didn't want no, to. No, that's okay. You. That's all right. See if that was. Uh... Ken, are you having any background noise there by chance? No, Todd, it, it's different people. Different, it, it no. Be... Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Christy. Sorry, sure. I just wanted to keep it so you weren't. No, I to totally understand. And we want to make sure people can hear this. Uh, again, there are 37 students in the first semester. 29 of these students are placed in Washington, and eight were placed at Rehab Hospital Northwest in Nyatch, who I just mentioned actually informed us last week that they're going to be requiring COVID vaccination effective immediately. Um, and again, these are Idaho facilities that we had hoped that we would be able to place students at. So um, how have we responded to some of the challenges um, during the upcoming or the incoming, I'm sorry, cohort orientation sessions in August, students were informed the college was waiting for information regarding whether facilities would be requiring um, vaccinations and or allowing vaccinations. Then during the first two weeks of the semester, the director of nursing made class visitations to each RN class sharing what we knew at that time to ensure that students were aware of what the challenges were. She stated that while she did not want to lose anyone from the nursing profession, she really felt obligated to let them know the many challenges that we were facing and felt that that was the right and fair thing to do to inform them just because of the such uncertainty that we were having during that time. Throughout the um, past few months, we have been reaching out to facilities for clarity on multiple occasions related to um, the vaccination requirements or any kind of declination processes. We will continue to search for acceptable clinical placements through October 15th, which is this Friday. Um, to date, we have limited options. Um, we are still working on that. I cannot even begin to share with you though, the number of hours this has required since like August. Um, our director of nursing, our clinical placement coordinator, our faculty and others, and the facilities have put in trying to navigate the many challenges and unknowns. At this point, um, we are offering a full tuition refund for nursing courses and saving spots in the next cohort, something that NIC has never done before. Um, for those students who do opt to uh, withdraw from the program on or before October 15th. I do wanna mention that it appears there has been some confusion among students who have reached out to individuals within facilities. That is um, due in part because the individuals that they're re reaching out to are not the individuals that we're required to communicate with, um, which are typically the HR or education services department. So while an entity within an organization may say that they would take a student, um, it really has to funnel through the appropriate channels at that organization. And we have not um, had the success that maybe some others have had in conversations with um, people in the facilities, if that makes sense. So we're not seeing the fruition of what the conversations have been. Um, where we are right now, and just a little bit of a recap, again, I know I, I gave you a lot of numbers. Um, there are uh, 176 nursing students between PN, which has 18, and the RM program, which has 158. We have 31 clinical facilities for our nursing programs. At this moment, six are requiring COVID vaccinations. The remainder are still unknown as to whether or not they will be requiring COVID vaccinations, and we still are waiting for information around that. So we have 168 students out of 176 that are placed right now in clinical rotations. We have eight students that we are still trying to place, five in the practical nursing and three for the first semester RN program. And we'll continue to, to try and do that 
through the end of this week. And the reason why we chose the end of this week is because in all fairness, for the students to be able to be successful, we really wanted to make sure that we gave a hard deadline instead of having to figure out um, hours and have to meet everything and then last minute have to figure out again and again and again, if that makes sense. We have um, eight RN students who are in the vaccination process that have an inter that will have, I'm sorry, an interrupted clinical experience, um, but we will be able to provide makeup time for these eight students so they have the opportunity to meet those specific outcomes. It's taking some challenges and there might be some evening and weekend pieces, but we're, we think we might be able to get those eight students um, through. We did have to make accommodations for the fourth semester students in order to meet the leadership clinical outcomes based on various issues that the facilities were having, identifying nursing leaders for us to pair up those students with. Um, the accommodation was made by having students complete the clinical hours, assisting in the COVID vaccination and monoclonal antibody clinic hosted by Northwest Specialty Hospital. So I would say that while this is good news for fall semester, spring will continue to provide us challenges. Um, facilities are still determining what their requirements will be for students and faculty. Many have actually placed their determinations on hold until they get their own employees figured out. So um, what that means for us is that things are still pretty tight with clinical placement. And if more changes are made, we will have to make more significant shifts on our end as well. Um, and I think the last thing that, and then I will stand for questions, the last thing that I really do just want to publicly say is kudos to the nursing faculty. Staff, um, again, being down three full-time staff and the overload and the taxing that this has taken on the division and the staff has been tremendous. And so I just want to publicly acknowledge the work that they have done um, in trying to accommodate all that we have. And again, having eight that we're still trying to work on Considering we have a hundred and some others placed, um, pretty good news. So I'll, with that, I'll stand for questions. All right. Uh, board, any any questions? I have a question. Trustee McKenzie. Of the 176, do you have the numbers that are vaccinated and unvaccinated? Chair Bandy, to you, Trustee McKenzie, we do. I did not think that would be appropriate for this. Uh, venue. Would it, but we do have that. Would it be fair to say that most of them are vaccinated or? No. Okay. It depends on the semester uh, in the program. Okay. And that's part of why you see the, the 74 placed in Washington versus Idaho, or, or the number. Yes, 74 placed in Washington and 84 placed in Idaho. Christy, do you have any questions? No, good report. Thank you. Um, Trustee Barnes or Trustee Howard, do either of you have a question? I don't have any questions, thank you. All right. I have a couple, a um, couple specific and a couple, I guess, at kind of 10,000 feet. The specific one is what can we do how do I want to phrase this? What can we do better or what do you attribute to those conversations at this level, not translating to this level where someone here might say, yeah, it would be great to have somebody and yet we're not able to work it through the process up here at HR. What, what can we do better or what do we need to do to, to open up those channels and, get, and get, uh, get, those, get more people placed that way, those relationships? So uh, Chair Reddici, what I would say is we are trying to do that right now. Um, as we hear about these situations where um, individuals have been, re have been reached out to, the students have been really good about letting us know who they are and we're trying to follow up on those. And what we are hearing from the facilities is that they will go back and talk to those areas and see if they can take more than one student. Because if they can take more than one student, then in that case, it would, it would offer us the opportunity. Chair Banducci and Vice President Doyle, I hope you don't mind me responding as well. My recommendation would be um, certainly to students or to others who are making these inquiries, when you get a yes, I would say you should respond by saying, thank you for saying yes. Can you please take this to your administrator so that it can be forwarded to North Idaho College so that they can respond 
and utilize that spot. Because unless the administration who oversees how many students are actually coming into that facility tells the nursing program that they can take more, it essentially doesn't happen. So if you get that kind of a positive response, just ask them please to make that go up through the administration to communicate with North Idaho College. We would be greatly appreciative, appreciative of that. Um, I have a couple more questions, but I am gonna make a shout out because I, I know that the college is uh, communicating with, uh, with Mr. Rasmussen, the CEO out at Northwest Specialty Hospital and his team. I know Dr. Burns has had communication with them and I know they're trying to assist us in, in placing more people. So I, I appreciate their effort and their engagement and their willingness to want to help. I, I would say it's fair to say that uh, Mr. Rasmussen wants to see every nurse be placed and doesn't want to see any nurse fall out of the system because we need them all. And they want them all, <laughs> it's amazing, all, for, uh, amongst you know, all the facilities. And I know they've been a great partner. Uh, different question though, uh, maybe this is a slight segue here. We're got a pretty significant construction zone going over here and we're spent a couple nickels over there on the expansion of the Meyer Health Center. And it'll help the biology classes and it does some other things, but. I think it's fair to say that one of the primary reasons we were doing that was hoping to ex expand our capacity for our nursing programs and to mm -hmm. try to reduce the wait lists and, and, and the challenges for people to get in. But we're having to limit and we're three faculty down and possibly a, a fourth and we have the other thing. Where, where are we gonna go with this? Because we may have excess capacity here pretty quick. Maybe we can't do anything with. It, it sounds like a real challenge coming up in front of us. I, I appreciate that comment, Chair Benducci. Um, that's the million dollar question. Uh, again, we have multiple challenges with uh, clinical faculty, with hiring full-time faculty. Uh, we are doing the best that we can. My sincere belief is that we will make this happen and, and we will be able to accommodate more students in our uh, program once the facility is done. One of the key uh, pieces of the facility is that we are having some group breakout sessions for our clinical groups. That has been a significant challenge for us to have those, uh, those smaller group meetings rather than picking up uh, class, big full-size classes. Um, I really do think that even just that simple measure is going to help us be able to increase and do more of, of serving our community. But I would invite uh, Dr. Burns to, to speak more to that as well. It just seems like it's exacerbating the clinical issue too, if we try to ramp up the numbers. Sure, Banducci, I'd like to uh, speak to this really from um, the statewide perspective. Mm -hmm. North Idaho College is not the only college in the state nor in the country that is experiencing the same challenge. It is a uh, phenomenon across the country that there are not enough clinical placement sites for the nursing students that this country needs to produce in order to meet the healthcare needs of the nation. And certainly you uh, add a pandemic to the top of that and it, you know, it weakens an already strained system. Um, the State Board of Education has requested that um, a work group be put together to address this issue statewide. They are inviting the clinical agencies uh, to be a part of the solution. So a meeting of uh, many hospital representatives, long-term care facility representatives, and certainly um, our directors of nursing across the state. Um, I have the privilege of also going to be able to serve on that uh, work group so that we can really talk seriously about how we are going to open up more clinical slots for um, nursing students. Um, I, I can't quote exactly how many nurses were short in North Idaho, but I would tell you it's probably over 600 nurses short in the North Idaho region. And across the state, if you can imagine that, we're the second largest uh, populated area. So you could probably double or triple that across the state of Idaho. So um, people are paying attention to this. We are working, we are going to be working more closely together to try to resolve this, um, but it's going to take that um, collaborative effort to address this issue. We did this um, once already in around 2006, 2007, uh, when the governor called the nursing task force. And uh, we worked on that for about a year. We initiated some programs that really seem to have a positive effect and now we're at the pl a place where we have to reconvene and address it again. Thank you. Thank you both. I, I guess all I can say 
not that I quote speak for the board, but I would think we're all like-minded there. If there's anything that we can do to assist in any way, either individually with people we know or contacts or just whatever, or corporately or whatever tools we can give, or you know, we need to talk funding or whatever, let us know what we can do. Because this is obviously one of our you know, marquee programs that we're known for, praised for. Um, so we want to do everything we can to su support it. And, yeah. Thank you. Three Sorry, Trustee McKenzie. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, if this board can do uh, anything, something to meet these students' immediate needs, just please promptly propose it to us. Um, I'm all ears. Um, I definitely care. And also it comes to mind, if, if we have an employee shortage, even after a salary adjustments that we've recently done, um, it seems to me also prudent to include uh, some concept. I don't know how to initially propose this. It's, I know it's a <clears throat> hot topic, but if we could somehow do extra pay for nurses to get those positions filled, if even temporarily for the next year or something, I wanna hear it because um, we need people. And I understand funding, we can only throw so much money at a problem, but if we don't have teachers, um, we need teachers. So at least I'm willing to vote towards an initial study like that, if that would help. Uh, and one more thing comes to lack of bodies. Um, one, prior retired instructor instructor um, who I imagine is still proficient in nursing and teaching because they just retired nine months ago and still qualified. I know because COVID has retired nurses that are allowed to come back. Um, I'm sure she'd be more than willing to uh, be, or at least be interested. I think she, um, the code name uh, Wheezy comes to mind if, for those who are familiar, um, said, said with all the appreciation with that code name. Um, and that's all I had to say. Sounds like some recruiting, maybe. Maybe I'll text you. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so much for, for um, your comments, and you will be hearing from us again. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Very important program, so we can need to give it as much attention as we need to. All right. We will move on to the uh, new business section of the agenda. Uh, the next item is, the, is an action item, a select trustee zone redistricting firm. Uh, that'll be uh, Vice President uh, Chris Martin, please. Chair Baducci, members of the board, uh, coming back um, to follow up from a discussion that we had at the September board meeting regarding selecting a firm to take on the responsibility of putting together maps for the redistricting of the trustee zones. Uh, you may recall that after the census, um, the board is required to go through a process to redistrict uh, the zones, creating um, five zones that are as close and possible to population mm -hmm. as possible. And so happy to stand for questions or provide further discussion. All right, trustees, are there any questions? Trustee Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chris, it appears that after studying the for four proposals that you had before you, that you did make a recommendation. Could you go through that recommendation? Absolutely. Uh, Chair Banducci, um, Trustee Wood, um, in reviewing, the, the college went out and, and sought five different proposals from companies that had experience in GIS in Kootenai County. Um, we received four proposals back. Um, our recommendation was to go with Alta Science and Engineering out of Kellogg. Um, they provided the most um, affordable quote, but they also provided options for multiple versions of the map for the board to review. So that was our recommendation was Alta. Thank you. I think also that Mr. Chair, if I may, th this is pretty timely. That's why it's on the agenda in the special meeting. Don't they need to, don't we need to have someone in place by tomorrow? Chair Banducci, um, Trustee Wood, we do have a very short timeline on this and our intention was to get them started at the beginning of October, as close to the beginning of October as possible. So, so yes, absolutely. We would like to give a firm the go ahead. Thank you. Any other questions? What, I have a question. Trustee McKenzie. I believe you talked to one more individual today. Could you elaborate on that? Chair Banducci, Trustee uh, McKenzie. I did talk to uh, Mr. Durst called today. Um, and also share that he'd be willing to do this work um, for the board. And 
how does his cost and experience um, factor in compared to the other ones? I know that was recommendation was done prior to that information. Um, Chair Banducci, um, Trustee McKenzie, he actually said he would be willing to do it for free, but remuneration in the three thousand to five thousand dollar range would be more than adequate should the board desire to compensate him for his time. And that's nearly or much less than half of the competitors. True. I mean, the bit that I saw. It if I may, I think free is way more than half. <laughs> it would be up to the board the way this was worded if they wanted to pay um, this person or not. I think it's if people are going to do effort, even for North Idaho College, I think it's wise to pay them something. But um, I'm also uh, was quite surprised and, and talked to him after um, reading that that uh, um, he's done similar GIS uh, mapping and rezoning districts for the state of Idaho for the legislature. And he's done this uh, numerous times. Um, so he has plenty of experience. So I'm done. Mr. Chair. Trustee Wood. Um, I did too see very late this afternoon the letter that came and Trustee McKenzie provided that. To my concern, which I expressed back to all of you, was this any solicitation or acceptance of a vendor by a trustee causes an automatic conflict of interest for us. All, all these types of contracts need to go through the business office. And our business office has had some time to study each one of the proposals and come back with a recommendation. So whether the gentleman is completely qualified or not, we've now created a bit of a conflict. And so I would just like to move forward. In fact, I'd make a motion to approve Alta Science and Engineering. Well, before we do that, can I have a discussion on that? Um, I, mean, I just made a motion. I I'll second the motion. Trustee McKenzie, yeah, hold on. I have a motion by Trustee Wood. I have a second by Trustee Howard. Now we can have more uh, discussion. All right, I'll open it. Trustee McKenzie. So what we have is the college had an individual in here who's nonpartisan, reach out to people with experience in doing this, and they received offers. And that's the exact same thing that happened otherwise so and it went through the business office i immediately forwarded it and doing i don't understand the trustee woods concern um and it seems extremely foolish to just pay more when we absolutely don't have to mr chair discussion may i see if Trustee sure. Howard or Trustee Barnes wants to engage first, just to give them the opportunity. It's kind of hard with the Zoom. I can see Ken at least maybe nodding. Michael, all I've got is his name on a screen. So it's a bit challenging. Uh, if either of you have a question or want to speak up, please please do so now so I, I know. And if I don't, if you stay silent, then I'll know that neither of you do. Because I do want to ask one question myself, if I may, and then I'll come back to you. And Chris, this, this may be uh, a very simple question in, in the sense of, but it, it says that they provided the lowest cost and they've also provide, while also providing two to four redistricting alternatives for board review and consideration. Does that mean we've, we've already seen stuff from them or they're, they're telling us that's how many they're going to give us. It almost seems like Alta's done some of the work or has already kind of outlined it. Am I, am I reading into that incorrectly? Uh, Chair Banducci, I, I believe you are. That's just as their scope of work, they committed to providing multiple versions of a map. Was that unique to those? Was, was everybody else just gonna like give us one or something? Chair, Chair Banducci, may I speak to my knowledge? Just one more, yeah. just, just one more, please. Sure, Manisha, we, we provided the scope, the same scope to each vendor and they, they responded. And this one specifically outlines multiple versions of a map. Okay, so they specifically called it out and said, we'll provide two to four where the others didn't The speak. presumption is we get one maybe, but we don't know. Or, or we get multiple, but it wasn't laid was out. It wasn't spelled out. Yeah. Okay, specifically. Okay. Just, do you have something specific to that question? Yes, I do. Okay, if you could add. 
So I'm in doing my uh, preparation for this, I learned a little bit about the redistricting process. process. And these maps, you kind of have to um, guess how a commission is going to uh, draw redistricting lines and precinct lines um, to be ready for when they do. You, you, the maps that you propose, uh, then you get to choose among those maps that um, you quickly adjust those maps uh, to basically comply with those new redistrictings from the redistricting committee. So th that's where everyone proposes um, four to five, as many maps as required of the vendor. And, um, and then of those that's closest to um, how you, how the, how the redistrict, how the GIS company uh, guesses how the commission is gonna redistrict, um, then they generally, you go with that map and you do the final tune. Okay. So it would be normal practice that we'd have mul multiple options. This is pretty standard. Everyone knows this question. Okay. Trustee Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just reiterate that the four that were studied by the business office, and again, the proper venue for those proposals to come into is the business office. Those are all it engineering went. firms. And uh, they've had the proper time to review this. They've made a recommendation. I couldn't imagine why we would go outside of their recommendation and a proposal that none of us have had really any time to look at, except Trustee McKenzie and the proposal came to him directly. So I, I'm just, we really need to honor process. And I, again, I, my motion is to, to approve the Alta Science and Engineering. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I could say something. Yes, Mr. Lyons. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's important to, to remind the board that, that we have a process here that has gone through. The business office has gone out and solicited proposals for this project well in advance. Um, this is, that is part of the business office's uh, uh, responsibility to do that. It, now, I don't know Mr. Durst, uh, and, and I can't comment about anything about him, experience, you know, ability, or any, anything like that. But, but I do want to mention the, the um, irregularity of having um, uh, vendors and, and, and professional service providers reach out directly to board members, particularly on the, uh, on, the, and on the very last day that this should be up for consideration. This is something that should, the board should have adopted a month ago or more. So uh, with all due respect to Mr. Durst, um, I, I would ask the board to, to not consider this and, and unless it, the board has some reason to do otherwise, um, follow the recommendations of the business office on this proposal because this redistricting has to be done. It is required by statute and there are timelines that, that affect it. So, um, uh, we've got professional engineering firms that are local in the area that can do it. This has gone through the, pro, the, the process through the business office, and it's for the board to, from an overview standpoint, simply adopt a, a, a motion to retain uh, somebody to do this redistricting. Redist and I would recommend that the board go, through, go with the recommendation from the administration. Trustee McKenzie. I understand people on this board have looked over this person's resume and may not like this person or people that this person's affiliated with, or I've even heard people sitting at this table who've disparaged people that have um, provided a <sighs> acknowledgement of this person's achievements um, on his resume. So I think it's important to highlight that this exact same process of people that this um, the business office knew reached out to and everyone be treated the same. Um, and just because say someone like myself proposes, even though Christy doesn't like me is what I've gathered, um, that no matter, it's not the person who's saying it, it's the message that people should consider. Mr. Chair, I'd and like to call the question. Message is this, and the message is this, is that this, person who Christie's proposing is paid over twice the amount for the same amount of services. I don't see as a good use of taxpayer funds at all. I'd like to call a question, Mr. Chair. 
actually, I Go. have a question for Chris, if I may ask my question. I've been kind of quietly waiting. It's perfectly legal to go with Durst, okay. and it's perfectly within our right. Trustee McKenzie, thank you. Um, Trustee Howard, are you okay if I ask Vice President Martin one question, or we call the question? I'm never going to object to anybody asking a question if it's relevant. Thank you. Chris, I'm going to ask you a question and I don't know the answer to it. So that's always dangerous in the public forum, especially when the recordings are on. In your opinion, it, is there any reason why we shouldn't, and, and we've also, we've heard from Mr. Lyons, so I, 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 again, it may be a dangerous question. Is there any reason in your, that we shouldn't be considering this uh, additional option or, or, or should we not, in your, in your opinion, did you, did, have you had enough time to vet it or is there a concern that it's too much of an unknown to be properly considered? I'm trying to get a perspective from your position. Everybody keeps talking about the business office and our process and our procedure and all the rest of that. And the bottom line is it kind of comes down to you. You're our expert on this and you're the one advising us. And you're the one that makes the recommendation. So I guess despite everybody's opinions and thoughts on this, I, I want to go to you and tell me is this a legitimate offer that we should be considering along with the other four we have or the reasons why we shouldn't and we need to stay with the original path that we had? And, you know, I'd love to just know your thoughts on that and your, and your rationale. And, and then we can call the question and go. But I just, you know, you're, you're the guy. So t tell me. Chair Banducci, members of the board, um, what I would be sharing is strictly my opinion. Uh, that's what um, I'm looking for. So after reviewing the information that was provided, my, my only concern is that, um, the legal definitions have to be provided by a licensed surveyor and that's a that's a process and so drawing the map is one piece but providing to the state board of education the different gis files with the legal descriptions is is another and based off of the review of the resume it does not appear this individual has the expertise to provide that so that would make him ineligible to do this project I believe he could do part of it, sir. Okay. No, he can do full of it, all of it. I, I'm aware of that. Well, hold on a second. It sounds like there's a, whether he can do it or not, there's a question of licensure. Is that what I'm understanding? Chair Banducci, I have the gentleman's resume, which does not speak to GIS experience or being a surveyor. That's that's all I have to go off of. No, no, that's okay. That's why I'm asking. Yes, sir. So he, he has to be a light. Okay. Well, that's why I asked the question, because sometimes there's things that disqualify. And so that's why I was that's why I was looking for is that there's something that jumped out. Point of privilege, then, sir. Chairman Banducci. Trustee I'd like to still, oh, I'd sorry. Like to still call a question. It's a point Mr. of privilege. Chair. Mr. Parliamentarian, am I still with the point of privilege? I, I don't know what the what the point is. What the point is is to uh, delay the vote until we can have that question resolved. Till the next special meeting. I'd like to call a question, Mr. Chair. Because I know the answer and it's an affirmative. Trustee McKenzie, please, just a moment. Um, okay, Trustee Howard, I, I heard you call for the question. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I don't know that the point of privilege is, is, is one to de delay this. The motion has already been made and seconded. No. So if it's we're going to- the same thing we vote, did on the 26th. If, if it fails, then, then the, the board can consider other actions. If it passes, then, then presumably the board doesn't want to delay it. Chris, can you be specific? What is our deadline right now on this? Chair, Chair Banducci, members of the board, um, I'm just going to kind of pull the statute so I make sure I get this absolutely correct. Um, we have 120 days from August the 12th. Um, based off of our calculation, the board has until December 12th to turn over approved maps to the State Board of Education. I have one more point of information. Just a second. And how long do we anticipate with the scope of work that was put out for bid and the bids that have come back? What have they told us that the time is to complete the contract? 
uh, Chair Banducci, we, we ask that they be prepared to present this at the November 15th board meeting to give us a little bit of time in case there need to be a back and forth and every firm uh, confirmed they were able to do that. With what start date? We were shooting for October 1st. Okay. Okay. The redistricting commission is still taking comments today. So the precincts are far from uh, being resolved, which would be the mess. So we have time if we. Mr. Chair, I still like to call a question. Yes, sir. I'm going to put it to a vote right now. All right. So we have a motion to approve Alta Science and Engineering for the sum of $10,700 to complete this task. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Aye. All right. The motion carries. Alta Science and Engineering is awarded the contract. Mr. Martin, would you do what you need to do, sir? Thank you, Chair Banducci. Just one point of clarification on this. Yes. It's a not to exceed contract. So we we're not anticipating it being the full, full amount, but they provided that as a not to exceed contract. So thank you. That was the same with all the quotes? Um, I don't know that they were all not to exceed, but I know this one was a not to exceed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item under new business, action to approve the resolution regarding acting president appointment. Uh, Mr. Lyons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, back in September, on September 24 of this year, the uh, board of trustees uh, asked and appointed Dr. Lita Burns to assume the responsibilities of acting president of North Idaho College. Dr. B Burns did express her willingness uh, to do so and did um, uh, discuss with the board the, the uh, concerns that she had with the, bo with the board going forward with the presidential search and other issues, uh, including uh, uh, rate of pay and that sort of thing. So the board approved uh, Dr. Burns as the acting president of the institution. And when we did discuss during that board meeting, board members did discuss with Dr. Burns and with my input, uh, um, the board members uh, executing a resolution memorializing this. And what we have before you that has been presented to the board is a resolution to commemorate the terms and conditions under which Dr. Burns is employed as acting president of North Idaho College. Uh, all of the uh, terms and, uh, that are in this or discussion points in this, are things that have all been previously addressed at the, at the last board meeting. And I'm just asking for the board to um, adopt this uh, resolution by motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Do I have a motion to uh, approve the resolution? Mr. So moved. Oh, go ahead. I'd second that. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, Trustee Howard made the motion. Trustee Wood has seconded. Do I have any comment, comments, discussion? Um, I, I, I do. Uh, Trustee McKenzie. I was under the impression that Dr. Burns would be included on the search committee as acting uh, during your time as acting president. The resolution does provide at the end and the additionally section that uh, that while she has since she has no intention of applying for the permanent position, Dr. Burns would also be included as a member of the search committee, regardless as whether she was an employee or retiree. That was one of the things that was discussed uh, last month, and then the board agreed to that. She will be part of the process. Are there any other questions? Or Mr. Chair, just a oh, question. Yes, go ahead. 
we uh, haven't had a thank you. We just haven't had real opportunity to thank Dr. Burns for her leadership during some very difficult times and for stepping up and taking on the responsibility of acting president. Um, just wanted to publicly thank you for that. We haven't had a real chance to do that, and that I you hit the ground running and and thank you for for doing that for us. Very good. I think we all uh, echo those sentiments. Is, is there anything else? Okay, I have, I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, hearing no further comments or questions, we will put it to a vote. And I, I will note that the uh, resolution is a bit, or is a bit unique uh, in that all five trustees are actually um, signatories to that. So baby steps. <laughs> and for those that don't understand, normally it's the board chair that signs off on those contracts for the president. But in this case, it's all, it's all of us because the way we did this and, and, and the way it came about. So that's probably fitting. So um, stamp of approval from everybody. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous, it passes. Um, Mr. Lyon, on this one, would, you would do what you do, sir. All right. You want to do that now? Since we have everybody here, I will just pass it down the signature page on there. So if you know, just sign it. Sign it, and we will date it today. It's so called date. real time. Yeah, just you don't need to. You don't need to date it. I'll put the dates in. Yeah, it's probably gonna be that, right? Okay. Mr. Lyons, I'll be in town next week and I'll sign it. Thank you. Um, Trustee Barnes, um, you, as I understand, won't be back for a while. Um, do I have your authorization to slash your signature today? Uh, whatever is appropriate, I can do an e-sign if that's uh, possible. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. I think that business is completed. That takes us to the last action item. It's action to approve the interim presidential search process. This is actually going to have a couple of parts um, all, all together, but it, it's going to probably have to be taken in a couple of bites. The two portions are one is we're going to discuss and approve tonight what the posting is going to look like for the interim president. And then the second thing that we're working on is the process itself of the events and timing to come to the point of hiring an interim president. And um, we were provided today, uh, well, first off for the trustees, there was an email rather late in the day that came um, from Dr. Burns, which was an update to the posting and pages two and three are identical. Um, page one was a little bit different and, and really the only place it was different that I could tell was under the item called compensation. And as her email had indicated she was working on the language there. Um, and um, so I hope everybody has that to reference. Um, and so we can talk about it. I have a, a couple inputs on the posting, but I'm thinking it might be better to start with the process because as we set this process up, the posting has some dates and information in there that will be uh, affected by the process itself. Right. So we're going to need to be consistent there. May I make a motion? Uh, Trustee Barnes, or Trustee, excuse me, Trustee McKenzie, my mistake. So looking at this um, interim president that's internal only, 
uh, I, I make the motion that we uh, adjust the dates uh, to be from October 13th, uh, which is tomorrow, uh, to Monday, October 18th at 5 p.m. Okay, can you say, say that again? So the, the, um, the opening date on this um, interim job position, uh, it's listed as October 15th. I want that to start uh, tomorrow, October 13th. And at the closing date, I want all materials must receive by uh, noon on the 18th. It's a Monday. Now you said noon. Now but, a moment ago, you five said... five p.m. five p.m. Sorry. Okay. Five p.m. on Monday, the 18th. Okay. So that would. Do I have a second? And you just, so we can open discussion on that. I'll second that to open discussion. All right. So this is on the posting that we're talking about right now. Mr. Chair. Mr. Yes, Trustee Wood. Well, I don't, I'm not sure what the rush is on. So the 15th and you want it back by the 18th. So, so not even three full days. That people have to get materials in? That's five days. You said the 18th. Yeah. So five the 15th days. to the 18th? Thir Thir 13th. 13th, 13th to the 18th. And so what what why what's the motivation to change the date and take away so much time for people to be prepared? Well, I don't do you have an answer to that? Well, yeah, I would like to, to that? Okay. provide this college. Um I would like to get this college an interim president. Um, that's the goal. I think it's best for this college. Well, we just we just approved the resolution on an acting president. And as a matter of fact, I think Mr. Lyons had information for us from our acting president. So I'm not I'm not sure why we're trying to rush rush a really important process. Well, I'll give you my thought on it. Actually, um, I think it's something that we need to do in a very timely manner. When we started this process a month ago, well, 22nd of September, the understanding was that there would be an acting president for a short period of time. We talked about it being for a few weeks, month, whatever. Then we have the interim president that would take us through the time it would take to do the full national search. And then even if you look at the resolution here under additionally on page two of leaders, it talked about that the board of trustees will immediately work with the administration to solicit the internal applicants to fill the role of interim president and then to engage in a search process for a new college president. And that search process will be consistent with the past practices for the for the full, full time permanent president. And, and of course, and Dr. Burns will be a part of that. So I think we're actually doing everything that we agreed to and in spirit and intent uh, from a timing standpoint. And the other thing is, there's been no secret of what's been going on. We've said this publicly, we've discussed it, it's been in the meetings. We're talking an internal search. So if you haven't been thinking about whether this is of interest to you by now, then maybe it's not. but Anybody that's here at this campus should be able to produce what's necessary within that time frame. And I would suggest that anybody that's interested has probably already had that conversation with their spouse of whether it's something they want to apply for and, and in what they would put for a resume or a cover letter or even a letter of interest. So I, I don't think it's a surprise. So if we were casting the net even regionally or certainly nationally, then that would be a completely different paradigm. And I think we'd have to have a lot more time. But that's not the case here. Um, I think this is one of those we're going to handle it internally. It should be fairly quick and fairly efficient. Um, I, there's no reason why it can't be. And quite frankly, for everybody else with the holidays coming up and everybody as busy as they are, I think it's something we need to get settled on and, and get moved forward. The longer we, we, per, we prolong this out, the one date on there wasn't even to see the materials until the 29th of October. Well, then I'm in November, and then I don't know how much further I am. And then before I know it, it's Thanksgiving, and my November meeting is the 15th. 
I, I just think it's unwieldy. We're going to be three months down the road if we don't get this taken care of. So I support I support Trustee McKenzie's um, schedule to be be more efficient in our time and and the meetings that we have to have because we're going to end up having to have at least one or two other meetings. And in a perfect world, it'd be lovely to have this pulled together by our meeting on the 27th of October. Uh, that would be that would be timely and 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 well done. The Please. other thing on the posting is uh, if what you're if what you're suggesting, uh, the temporary position anticipated would start in October of 2021. Uh, now. Dr. Burns did some adjustment on the salary. Uh, she, she and uh, Karen Hubbard, or I don't know if that was you or Karen. Mm -hmm. um, originally, it had said 200,000, and then it was adjusted to say 180,000 to 200,000. Uh, again, depending on you know, experience and credentials and things. We're, um, we're, we're getting out of my discussion and my motion. We are, I'm sorry. Do, we could just do your initial motion with the second. We're just talking about the posting. So I, I went a little further, sorry. So back to discussion, I go ahead. All the question. I mean. May, may I speak? Yes, Dr. Burke. Chair Banducci, if I may just speak to this. Um, this does raise a bit of concern to me as the acting president in that typically when we post internal positions, we rarely post for less than one week. We typically post for two weeks for internal positions and a minimum of three weeks for external positions. Um, I will would like to remind the board that the meeting on October 20, excuse me, September 24th was a special meeting. It was um, attended by maybe 15 constituents um, besides um, those of us who were around the table as the board members or um, our administration. Um, special meetings are not recorded. There has not yet been a public posting of the minutes for the special meeting because of the, we did not have the electronic version to be able to record the minutes um, as quickly and as appropriately as possible. So while there may be some discussion across campus about the timeline, I don't think there's been any formal discussion about um, the, the interim position. Um, I also would tell you that um, I, I left that meeting on the 24th um, with the understanding that I would be bringing these materials forward to the October 27th board meeting for your review so that it could be re, um, posted in a short time and hopefully get it to you by the November 17th uh, normally scheduled board meeting. The opportunity came for this particular special meeting. Um, it came up rather quickly and when it came up, I worked with Karen to make sure that we had the materials to you actually a bit early. So getting these, this uh, posting for you um, for today's meeting would allow us to publicly post internally this position, allow for our faculty and staff and administrators who uh, meet the qualifications for this position to have um, time to prepare their materials, submit the materials, we can quickly turn those materials around, have them to you by um, November 3rd, which would give the board a full two weeks to review those materials before their meeting on the 17th. Um, to me, that is a fair and open process for posting of positions, particularly positions of this um, caliber. The, the meeting's actually on November 15th. Excuse me. And quite for Frankly, I had a very different impression coming out of that meeting. I had thought we'd emphasize that the posting would be done. And in, and in fact, other trustees questioned me even as far, and, and Mark is aware of this because we were waiting to see your agreement. And by Monday night, we hadn't seen it. I, I know Trustee Barnes had questioned me. And then as the week went on, Trustee McKenzie questioned me. And I had agreed that if I hadn't seen the posting and or your contract, that we were, your addendum, your, your resolution, by Wednesday and today, I would call Mark. And then Mark happened to call me late afternoon on that Wednesday and told me, actually, Mark emailed me, but I didn't see it until Thursday. You had called me late on Wednesday and, and said that you had reconsidered 
And then I got, I saw Mark's email that he had sent out on that Wednesday, but I didn't see it till Thursday. And so that whole, that whole discussion got moved to the right and was off the schedule that I, I had thought. Uh, I had expected to have stuff back to me right away the first of the week for both the posting and, and for your resolution, if your uh, contract addendum. If I may. Um, Mr. McKenzie. When it's part of our accreditation that when this board says we're gonna do something in our accreditation response that we actually follow through and provide examples. And when we say we're immediately gonna go for an pre interim presidential search, I would think that we would immediately do it and not wait two weeks or however long it's been. And then it's just, it seems like this has gone on plenty to the right and I'm um, ready to get it resolved. I think it's best for this university. Mr. Chair, uh, Community College. Mr. Chair, under discussion? Trustee Wood. What, we, what we're just really discussing is being considerate to people that may want to apply. And we have a great acting president. We don't have any concerns. There's no time crunch here. In fact, there's even an opportunity uh, at a later discussion that maybe she would apply for an interim while we go through the search. I think we have to be really mindful as trustees to not be disruptive to the campus. They've been through a lot already. I think continuity matters. And if we can give them some sort of security and give people the proper amount of time to get their affairs together, to apply for a position, that's just us being considerate. We really don't have any kind of an emergency or time crunch to move this up to take away that much time from people who may want to apply. So I, I'm really struggling with the motivation on why we would do something like this. Just a second. Trustee McKenzie, um, you've made a motion. Uh, I seconded it on, on a very narrow scope on the posting. Was there anything else on the posting you wanted to address? Or are you thinking there would be multiple motions uh, to address the posting. Um, I, I have a couple comments on the posting. That's why I'm asking. Well, I remember in our special meeting, which also I'd like to remind everyone that the announcement went out in the Nick now immediately of what that summary of that special meeting was going on. So for those who weren't in attendance, so it's, the word has been spread out there from the results of that. But I do notice a big difference in this uh, job posting, which I, I guess I will amend my motion. Uh, in, in that special meeting, the, it was, you made clear um, that the resumes would go directly to the board, and I, I would assume that would be through Mark Lyons, and, that, and that's not how this uh, job posting is uh, listed, um, and I would just, yeah, I guess I, I will even amend my own motion to uh, fix the dates, how I said, and that the resumes of those applying go straight to Mark Lyons and to this board to evaluate. All right. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could, I don't think it's appropriate to, to have the resumes come to Mark Lines. I think the resume should go through HR and the, the applicant people that are going to apply for that. They also should not be just, just sent out when they come in to the board members for consideration. Oh, I, the, I would think they'd have to all be sent at the same time. So yeah, I was under this scenario, so, yeah. say... And considered at a board meeting... Um, so yeah, I mean yeah, I, no, I think I think you would have to have that. So if if you took Trustee McKenzie's timeline of five o'clock on Monday, October eighteenth as a closing, if that's what I've written down here, then by ten o'clock on Tuesday, October nineteenth, it would be appropriate if all the trustees were provided that those re, uh, resumes, and then we'd set up a special meeting to consider those together as a group on say, what would be next? Uh, how about say Thursday the 21st? So come together, everybody can have a couple days to review those on their own. We come together, we have a special meeting. I, I think it'd have to be an executive session because it's personnel on Thursday, 10, 21 and review the candidates there. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, rather than, yeah, if you're trying to set a schedule right now, I can tell you I am not going to be available between the 18th and the 23rd. I just won't be available. So uh, I'm going to be traveling. 
I won't be able to review. I won't be able to review the material, and I won't be ready for a meeting. And, and Mr. Chairman, I, let me also also say that that forwarding the the, the materials to the board or in, in which they will be using to make a decision in this case would be uh, constitutes a deliberation. I'm okay doing that if it is right in con in conjunction with a board meeting because that would be appropriate, but not not for days or, or, or more in advance so that people can uh, trustees can can evaluate these on uh, you know have a lot of time to evaluate this these on their own. I, it, these, there, there's a process to these open meetings. Open meetings are supposed to be um, you know uh, complied with. As, as strictly as we can, executive sessions have to be a, complied with as, as strictly as we can. So uh, I think it's important that the information be collected by the institution and we don't go around the institution on this uh, and, that, and that we schedule a meeting and then maybe just, well, just maybe a day in advance of the meeting, people can, can get access to these so that they you know, they don't, we don't have to hand them out during the meeting, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not in favor of, uh, if I may, support sending them out well in advance. Greg. Mark, are you? I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Trustee McKenzie. Ken Howard, I'm just going to say, I really don't appreciate how many times you say you're not unavailable just to control this board schedule. We, okay. just for example, Christy, I'm talking now. Please don't interrupt. I, oh, hold on, please. Please. Just for example, everyone, August 4th, we approved scheduling, August 18th, not even five minutes later, then you, you said you weren't available. So to be honest, sir, I, it's hard for me to, to, to hear that from you. Just it's, it's been used so many times. And on top of that, um, then uh, just in another example of, of cooperation on this board is there's been numerous, well, two members really, there's been continually voting not to go into executive session. And it's been very hard for this board to operate. So I keep trying to reach across the aisle, sir. Not even aisle. I mean, we're all, there's no sides, really. I keep trying to engage with you, really. And um, it just, it seems very difficult. So you've made it very difficult. So I still stick with my original motion um, <laughs> that it closes on the 18th at 5 p.m. And I call the question. Mr. Chair. Further discussion? Oh, I will allow it because when Ken called the question, we did have some additional discussion at that time. So. Thank you. I, I'm not sure what's going on tonight, but there's a whole lot of personal accusations. We're just trying to do the business of the institution. Yep. And nothing is directed toward Trustee McKenzie personally. We're just trying to conduct the business of the institution. And I think sometimes if you say things about other board members and their motivations, all that does is damage relationships. Um, back to the timeline. Uh, again, I would ask the board to be considerate of the people on campus that would want the time to apply correctly. And Mr. Lyon, if I remember, we don't ever give out personnel resumes to trustees. We would come into the office unless in Ken's case and in Michael's case, they aren't able to do so, that would be handled by you specifically. But the rest of us, we come into the office to review the resume one by one. The material doesn't come to us directly, is that correct? Mr. Chairman, uh, Trustee Woods, yes, yes, that's generally the protocol is, is we keep, we keep uh, applicants and personnel information that the board needs to look at uh, secure, which is one reason why I am very, I, I'm, I'm almost gonna insist that this be done through the college and not directly through the attorney uh, circumventing the HR. All right, well, I have a thought. Here's what we could do. Maybe this accommodates everybody to a degree. Maybe it's a compromise. 
I still think it gets us to the end game here where we need to be. And hopefully we'll meet Mr. Lyons' uh, concerns also. And I wanna talk a little more about the posting in a minute, but let's talk about the timeline and the actual process. If the resumes all still go to uh, Teresa Henderson, with again, the caveat of whatever day that closes out, the next, um, then that's fine. So what we could do, Christy, right now, the motion on the table is to go to the 18th. Maybe that could be extended to say like Thursday the 21st uh, at uh, like five o'clock. And then what we could do is set up a meeting on the 25th and the trustees would go through the candidates and have a meeting and we would uh, pick somebody. We would go through the, the and pick somebody that night. And then we'd have uh, two days to finalize the contract. And then we could do the formal announcement at our ag actual regular board meeting on October 27th, which would be appropriate. And Mark, you could give us the information on Monday, the 25th, for that meeting, right? Mm -hmm. That same day, that would meet your, what you would want, correct? And you'd have to figure out how to get it to Mike, uh, Michael and, um, and um, Ken. And we, have, we have ways to do that. Would you, would you be the one that would facilitate that to them or would, would HR do that? Well, we could we could do it either way, uh, assuming the board agrees to that protocol. Okay. So that that would be that would be, um, and I know you have a motion on the floor, so it'd have to either be amended or stopped. But here's what I'm going to say. I'm making notes here. So what we would do is we would post a job after we finish. We got to go back through the posting. We've got a couple things on that, but we would post a job tomorrow, say by 10 a.m. So that'd be posting it on Wednesday, 10, 13, by say 10 a.m. Responses could be due by 5 p.m. on the 21st, that'd be Thursday. And then we would have an executive session on 10, 25 to do the selection of the interim president. And then We'd have a day or two, probably for Mark and, and, and probably me, to work with our choice to finalize, make sure the contracts are agreed to. And then on the open board meeting on 1027 would be the time that we would have a formal vote on that person. And under the, hopefully we all voted for him and picked him already, her, him or her, the person. Um, the individual, uh, then they would be selected and we'd have the contract ready and we would uh, sign that and the um, interim president would, would be put in place. Now, Christy, does that, does that give you, uh, does that sound better for you to give those extra three days for the receipt of the Well, what I would say applications? is I, I appreciate your consideration and that you're trying to find a compromise. That's what I would say. For me personally, um, Mr. Chair, it's really about, um, I'd leave it to the expertise of Dr. Burns and what she thinks the campus needs. But I do appreciate that you're working very hard on the compromise. Um, I just don't, I'm still struggling with what the rush is. We, uh, Dr. Burns is agreed <clears throat> to stay with us at least through November. So I just, I just don't understand why we're trying to rush this. Um, Trustee McKenzie, would you, for the moment, because uh, I would be willing to withdraw my second, would you be willing to withdraw your motion regarding the posting and let us come back to that and let's address the timeline for um, the hiring 
process mm -hmm. because I think the posting is going to have to come backwards from that. Sure. Yes, sir. In the spirit of cooperation. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Because then we still got a couple things on the posting to talk about. All right. So. Did what I say made sense for for what your motion would be regarding the timeline from um, what you were initially proposing? I wasn't taking notes. Could, could you? No, that's all right. Okay, I'm going to say it, and then everybody can hear it. And if that wants to be your motion, then go for it. All right. When the posting is completed which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, posting will be made on Wednesday, 10, 13, 21 by 10, by 10 o'clock. That's an arbitrary time, but that's good enough. Uh, does that give us time in the morning, Karen, to post that by 10 a.m.? Okay, thank you. Uh, responses would be due by 5 p.m. on would that be? Yeah. Thursday. the 21st and all of those will go as on the posting to Teresa Henderson. And we will have a special meeting on Monday, 1025 to select the interim president. Mr. Lyons will have the 26th and 27th to finalize the contract with the candidate that's selected. And then we will formally vote on and select that candidate at our regular board meeting on 10-27 and Mr. Lyons will have the contract prepared to be signed. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair. Who's speaking? Is it Ken, Ken, Ken Howard? Howard. Ken. Okay, go ahead, Ken. Trustee um, Howard. I have no difficulty with the, with the um, schedule that you've outlined other than the 25th. I actually have a court hearing with the State Board of Property Equalization on that day. Is, is that a, is that an all day thing, sir, or could you be available in the evening? We could wait and do this in the evening at like six o'clock or something. If, if we could do it like six o'clock, that would be fine. I, I think my hearing is at 1.30. Okay. Okay. Probably takes about four or five hours. Okay. Do you think six o'clock would, would accommodate you, sir? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll set that time at six o'clock on 1025, uh, 1800 hours. And, and Ken, quite, quite candidly, if, if, if for some reason you think you're gonna be a few minutes late or something, if you would just con be, be in contact with us, we can, you know, we'll be flexible and adjust, you know, whatever we need to do. We can either do that. Well, let me, let me put you, sir, let me, let me, let me do this. And, and Christy, bear with me. I'm sorry, I'm dancing here a little bit. The reason I, do, I jumped from Thursday to Monday was I didn't know if anybody wanted to do this on a Friday. I mean, we could do that, but I don't know how everybody feels about a Friday. I mean, we could do that. If, if that would be more convenient for you, Ken, that still would give us more time, Christy, to get the stuff. We still could have it all the way 21st because we only need like this much time between when they come in and when our meeting is. So Friday would be, what would that be? Be the 22nd. So we could give it to the 21st, Thursday. Sorry, I had to think about this for a second. And we could have the meeting on a Friday because they just would get us the um, stuff the next day anyway. We're only going to get it right in advance of the meeting, right? So we don't need it three or four days in advance. But Mark, Mark mentioned that. He, he didn't want to make sure we didn't do that. Ken, would that, what would be better for you? Would Friday or Monday be better, sir? You know, I don't have a calendar in front of me right now, so I can't tell you. Um, okay. The, I know the 25th is, is the, the one day I have a hearing, and I'm happy to do that in the afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. Okay. 
Uh, you had mentioned traveling. What was your last travel day? Do you recall? I think the 18th to the 22nd. Okay. The 22nd is a Friday. So you might be traveling on that day. So I guess it would depend on what that would look like for you. Um, Mr. Chairman, are you talking about a, a meeting on the 22nd or the closing date for applications? No, no, a meeting, a meeting, sir. The closing date right now I have is the 21st. Now is to give a few more days from the 18th uh, per, per Trustee Wood. She, she felt, I'm not trying to speak to you, but that we needed a, a couple more days. So if we extend that from the 18th to the 21st, uh, Mr. Lyons, what I'm thinking is we either would have our, our meeting on the 22nd or the 25th to review the applications and for the board to, to make a decision. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if, 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 if we go with this process, I think the 25th for the meeting is probably um, probably better. That gives, uh, that gives the administration a day okay. uh, with me and a way to figure out how to, to get the uh, material for the board ready by the next business day, which would be the 25th. Okay, that's why I'm asking. We're at, just having a discussion. I wanna see what we can do here. All right, so uh, Trustee Howard, so Ken, why don't we shoot for the 25th and we'll just do later at say six o'clock. And if you think we need to adjust, let us know or we'll, we'll get here and we'll sing songs until you're ready. Um, but we'd be happy to work. try and make it as quick as I can. All right, so hearing. yes, sir, I, I understand. Okay, so I don't know if I, can I make a motion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, well, let, let me state what I think the motion would be. Okay, go ahead, please. It's, sir. it's a motion to, to open, have an opening date for applications on October 13th. Yes, sir. And the closing date for applications to be the 21st. Um, and, and I think you can just do that motion. Okay. And, and then with the scheduling the meeting, I don't know that we need a motion for that. If the, party, if, the, if the trustees are agreeable, we can just schedule that meeting. Okay. I'll go so move. Okay, so trust, uh, Trustee McKenzie has made the motion. Do I have a? Yeah, he had a motion. Yeah. I think he withdrew I, it. I withdrew mine. I'm sorry, let me back up. I said I would withdraw my second if he would withdraw his motion and he said he would. So yes, or maybe we didn't do that very loudly. Thank apologize. You. That's a good catch, but we, I thought we, we were okay there. Um, I, I second it. I might have leaned away from the mic and, and looked in this way. Okay, did I have a second? I second it. Okay, so I have a motion by Trustee McKenzie. I have a second by Trustee Barnes. Okay, and we have Mark just stated the motion. Okay, are there any other? Questions or comments on that on the and the and the twenty and then we'll do this we'll schedule a special meeting next. Okay. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, or excuse me, all those opposed, please say nay. Nay. All right, the motion carries. I would like to put on the schedule a special session on Monday, the 25th of October at 6 p.m. I believe everybody can make that. Is that, Mr. Chair, is that just a calendar item for Shannon to send out? Yes, ma'am. I, I'm just, I, I, do I need to do a motion or a vote or agreement to that? No, Mr. Chairman. Um, if, if, if the, you discussed it with the board members, uh, you can set a date and, and the members have all indicated that, that they can be available one way or another on the 25th in the evening. So, so Shannon will, will, will put together a, a, a notice and uh, uh, an agenda for that meeting. All right. Just, just a moment. Okay, uh, Ken, was was there a problem with the date or the time? No, the reason I voted nay was because I I don't like the idea of rushing it the way we're doing it. It's it's okay. the concept of rushing it. 
that I voted against. Okay, just I just want to understand. Thank you, sir. Because I, I want to make sure I had heard you correctly and that I didn't get that wrong on the time and the dates. So, okay. All right. So we have the the timing of the posting and we have the meeting set. Uh, Mark, do I need to say anything about working the finalization of the contract on the 26th and 27th and the stuff we need to do there? I suppose you could make a motion to uh, have me have a contract done by that time, but I, I would prefer you simply, if you make your selection on the 25th, then, and I know your next meeting is on the 27th and you want to have a contract by the 27th, assuming we can all agree, I will have a contract by the 27th. Okay. And, okay. Can, can I make a motion that we get the resumes by like 10 a.m. that the same day as the meeting? Well, and hold your motion. I think that. that's okay, right? Yeah. I, I, here's what we'll do. I, I, I'll work with HR and make sure that we get the resumes available just as soon as we can. I can't give you a deadline on it, but, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll, we want you to have the resumes with as much time as you need <coughs> meeting so that we can discuss them intelligently at the meeting and you can make a, make a selection. Yeah, I didn't think we needed a motion. Let's just talk about it. Let's, uh, let's ask Mr. Lyons what, what, what works. <laughs> we will we work People have as, to do some uh, things and let's make we sure can. we can get there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so that part's done. Um, do have a couple questions on the posting. So let me open that up to anybody else first. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Anything on the posting itself, the three pages that were provided to us by um, Karen Hubbard and, and Dr. Burns? Uh, are we as in the form of motions or are we just well, just just talking about it okay anything you want to add or or change or let's just have a discussion first and then we can have a motion. do i have to have a motion well mr chair no. i'm happy to make that motion we'll just take make a motion i don't think we need one right now you have you have the position description and 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 the posting that 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 will go out you, your motion really was to set the parameters on when somebody's going to going to um uh, apply and when when those those applications will be closed if you if you want to review and change the position description i suppose you can do that you have this to work with and so if if we get to that maybe we you know as as a as a board you'd want motions to change the, the description okay, so how about we do discussion and then after we chat and, and hopefully we can all get to the same spot we'll make a motion can i ask a question or, unless you well, I do, I'm just so used to a motion, a second, and then discussion, but I'm, that's fine. I, I, and Christy, I'm not opposed to the way. I'm not even sure what the motion would be. I mean, I didn't say I that. was going to make a motion to approve the oh, okay. no. to approve the presidential search, interim presidential search process that's been presented. Well, because we're going to need to change a couple of things. That's okay. Too. You can do that. Yeah. So I just have a, the latest copy, as in, um, does it have the salary range of 100,000, 180 to 200,000. Am I looking at the latest rev? That is the latest one. So let's make sure everybody's got the latest one. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle back. Cause that, don't, that's not a criticism, but it, it came a little bit late this afternoon. Um, so I just wanna make sure everybody has it. The, the, the key, the, the only change, Lita, correct me if I'm wrong, but the only change from the previous version to this version was um, the compensation paragraph in the middle of page one of three. That was the only difference, wasn't it? Um, yes, Chair Banducci, and may I explain why that changed? Yes, please go ahead. The reason that changed is that um, we wanted the language to be consistent with the resolution that was made in terms of how the distribution of that, that salary is going to occur. The range was put in because when I proposed the $200,000 as a reasonable compensation for the um, acting president. It was based on my own knowledge of my years of experience, my years in uh, higher ed management and administration, and uh, my, my own credentials with a PhD. And so it did not seem fair for the board to have to consider everyone at that particular salary when we might have individuals applying for this position that have varying levels of experience 
and varying credentials based on how the um, position description is, is presented to you. So uh, we, Karen and I reviewed, once again, um, the ranges of salaries for present presidents in, in the United States and in uh, the Rocky Mountain region. And we came to that range, again, trying to provide the board the authority and the flexibility to set the salary that they would want to set commensurate with the experience and the credentials. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> it's about that then, just to understand this process. Tr Trustee McKenzie. Um, since it does have a range, would the candidates be indicating that the range that they would be interested in, or is that negotiations after? How does that go? Is that in the application process? Well, I suspect if we selected somebody, then we would give input to Mr. Lyons as to where we think we are with the salary. Does that sound right, Mark? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Trustee McKenzie, uh, typically if you have a range like this, they will they will apply once in a while. Somebody puts in that what they want is you know what they their expectations are. Oftentimes they do not, and and then then it becomes a, a discussion point, Nego negotiation, if you will. Can can we just suggest this that the applicants uh, provide uh, the, their salary? Or is that would that be okay? Sorry for a newbie question, but um, Mr. Chairman, if you would, Trustee McKenzie, uh, I, I'm I'm willing to take input from anybody and in, in my uh, uh, view that's that, that's some, sometimes a, a chilling have a chilling effect on people because they may not want to do that they may want to leave it open and uh, and then discuss you know because they may be there may be a range in there and I think most people applicants are more comfortable with the range do you think so mark because there's and I'll get later I'll get yeah, I'm sorry because I'll be quite honest leader looks what did I write in red when I first saw that? 180,000, which is where I was going to come at this. So I don't know if a range is better or not. If a range is better, we'll stay there. If a range is not, I'd like to start this at 180,000 myself. And we're going to have a first time president, which is a, a big notch on who, whoever that is. And it's a step up and it could be something to stay here, apply for the permanent, could be a stepping stone to somewhere else. So to Dr. Burns' point, we're paying her at a, at a salary for a lot of reasons and many, many years of experience and everything else. Um, so I'm actually fine if it's better just to have a number. I, I'd like 180,000. Yeah, no, no, Mr. 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 Chairman, that motion. Let, let me clarify. I, I, was, uh, I was suggesting that if you left it as, if you were telling the applicant to give you their price that they want to work for. That's one thing. What you're suggesting is putting in, this is the job, this is what it pays. That is, that is I think, more common than, than asking the applicant to put in okay. what they want. Yeah, I, I make the motion then that we fix it at 180. Okay, well, let, let's finish the discussion Sorry. and we'll do a motion in a minute. Okay, Sorry. so we're just talking about numbers here. So, okay, so based on what we've passed, at the top of this sheet, the opening date would be October 13th. That'd be tomorrow. The closing date would be October 21st, which is Thursday. And I, th I think we need to what, say 5 p.m. So end of the close of, close of business, five o'clock on Thursday, October 21st. Um, in the first, first full paragraph, it says this is a temporary position anticipated to start in at the October of 2021 then. Um, this could be part of the motion, but I'm going to vote for the 180,000. But I do have a question. And Dr. Burns, I would like your opinion on this. For an interim, and we, and we know that the presidential search the nationwide presidential search we're going to do with the national firm. It's going to take us a couple, three months at least, four months, take a while. Chair Banducci, I would anticipate it would take no less than four months, probably up to six months okay. or, or longer. 
I wrote something here in my notes and, and, and I don't know if this makes sense. Maybe Chris can help me out on this one. And by the way, thank you. I, I, I thank Lita, I'll thank you too for the information on all that. Uh, and what I'm referring to is these folks very graciously got me a, a list of the expenses and the things that go on with the president's office and the different things that are going on and the costs and the expenses and all the rest of that stuff. And I, I believe every trustee was, was, made available, was made available to all the trustees. So it's not something I exclusively got or anything, but it, it helped me get some ideas. Because one of the things I put in my notes here was what I called normal presidential expenses. And, and by that, if a person becomes interim and it's for more than a few weeks or a month, which is part of why we didn't really do more because we have that conversation with you, um, then there might be some things that would be out of pocket. And then there's an actual budget for that office. So I don't know if we have to say 180,000 and do I need something that just says a normal presidential expenses or something like that? BP Martin, does that make sense? Do I, do I need to address that somehow? Okay. Karen, or, you know, I'm sorry, Dr. Burns. <laughs> sorry, let me let her. <laughs> Chair Benducci, yes, ma'am. I think that would be a part of the contract that um, Mr. Lyons would be putting together, and that would be included in the contract. Okay. I, um, you don't think we need to put that in the posting? I do not. Okay, thank you. Then, then we will not. I just want a clarification because I just want to be fair to whoever takes it because, you know, if you're doing this for, again, don't think it's wrong, but you've been for a month and even Jill had it and you've been very good. <laughs> but if you start to do this over a period of time, there's going to be things that are going to come up and expenses. And I, I don't want that to start coming out of somebody's pocket. So I just want to be, be fair to them. Okay, so we won't worry about that. Okay, so opening date, closing date, October, 180,000. Um, does anybody else say anything on page one that they'd like to discuss? Otherwise, I have just a couple quick things on page two. Page three is fine with me. I said two questions on page two. Otherwise, I thought it looked good. Um, I'm just going to start off unless somebody else raises their hand or jumps in. On page two, in the middle of the page, under the section called Required Minimum Qualifications. And then we have the section that says Education and Experience. I'd like to modify a couple things just a little bit. The second bullet says a minimum of five years of experience in higher education, administration, senior leadership required. Uh, two things. One is I'd like to change five to three. And the second is, I'm, I'm not sure how we're defining administration slash senior leadership. So I say, I'd like to just strike that. So I'd like it just to say a minimum of three years of experience in higher education required. It is, it is vague. Um, that, that's my thought on that. Are, you, are we taking discussion as we go? We certainly can. Thank you. You bet. Well, I that's what this pur purpose was for. Okay. O open dialogue here. So the minimum of five years experience, that's pretty standard um, in all of the past job descriptions we've given out for this position. And I would just say that we're not an experiment here. We need to have fully qualified people with leadership experience as at a presidential level or a vice president level minimum. That's administrative experience. So, and senior leadership is, is really kind of described the same way. You've been in a leadership position for at least five years. So I, I couldn't imagine why we would water that down, Mr. Chair. I would be very opposed to that. Christy, would you, would you be open to a compromise? Would you be open to we keep the five years, but I still strike that other language because I don't think it's very well defined. And I think that, that opens us up. If this was a if this was a preferred or suggested, because there's another spot in here later where it says, you know, these are preferred things or, or things we'd like. Like right below it, it says preferred experience. So we talk about stuff there. And right below it, it talks about senior level administrative experience. So I think we're duplicating ourselves. So I think the first bullet, we have master's degree from regionally accredited institution required. Okay, I get that. And we say doctorate preferred. Now, you know, you know my thoughts on that. I, I'm not, the doctorate's kind of a so what, to me, I don't always want us to be pinned by it, but I like this where it just says it's it's preferred, but we can hire someone if they didn't have one. Because I, 
yeah, anyway, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> well, I, I guess I will take a shot at that. Yes, we have left that open in the past because we wanted to look at a large pool of exactly. candidates. And maybe someone from business or something. But I would yeah. also say that you know. we are an education institution and we absolutely support higher education and retaining those levels. And we do. And that's why, Christy, I, I'm not asking to take that off the, the doctor preferred. So I'm leaving the first bullet intact. Okay, that's part of my compromise because I looked at that real hard. The second one then is I would go ahead and stay with the five years. If it just said a minimum of five years of experience in higher education required. And then- Higher education administration, Mr. Chair. Well, I still don't know what that means. That means they've served in a role of administration, such as a vice president. I think that's too <laughs> limiting. If we're gonna do, what you just did there is you just narrowed us down to about two people on this entire campus. We're doing an internal search. And I don't think we can go that narrow. Otherwise, we just we just bound ourselves to about two people. Well, Mr. Chair, we only have so many vice presidents. We're looking at an interim position to take over a major organization for about six months, and that person should have that level of skill. That's what we're going to look for in our permanent position. Again, I understand, but if we're going to have a true internal search and try to look at the talent that we have on this campus, I, I think that is a little too narrow. And again, we're going to talk about it right below. Preferred experience, it's gonna say senior level administrative experience, experience work, and then, and then here's the other part that's kind of interesting. Follow the bullets, and, and these are a bit incongruent to be quite frank. I've got progressive senior level administrative experience at community college. I might have people that have been in education their entire life, they may have their PhD. But then the second one says experience working in business and industry and or career and technical education. Okay, I can find a whole lot of people that meet that first, first sub bullet in the preferred experience. And even the, the second bullet, and the first one that we just talked about, and they can't come close to that one in any regard whatsoever. They've never touched CTE, and they've certainly never been in business or industry. People that have been stovepiped in education. So if, if that's my other one that's equal, I mean, don't take this wrong, but if I look at if I look at Vice President Stanley, sir, how much have you been in business and industry? Oh my goodness, let's don't do this. No, no I don't mean to. I'm just an example. I'm sorry. It's just but yeah. my point is, I think. I think we've got to be careful not to limit ourselves. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. So that's why I like that it says preferred experience. Those are things that are nice to have are in considerations. One is, hey, you've got a lot of experience at senior level administrative community. On the other hand, we also recognize that there's, there could be a great value and experience in business and industry and or with the CT connection. You know, we have a Parker Center, we have, so that's good. And then I also have higher education teaching experience. Many administrators have not come out of the classroom, but again, we may have a teacher here that's got his, got his or her PhD, and they're just amazing, and they and and we might want to consider them. I, I I'm not saying that's the case, but Mr. I want to Chair, keep this open. It's internal. I would just say that if you're seriously discussing looking within faculty ranks with no administrative experience whatsoever to run this institution, that we I will not agree to that. First of all. <laughs> And you're setting well, we're, us up. Well, that's the point. Failure. We're going to get applications and we're going to review them. And then you know, every, you'll get plenty of say at that point. You may have somebody. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't have an example. So so I don't if, I, if I may, I guess this is just getting into is getting a pool of people. Yeah, that's reviewed. what I'm there's And, and being inclusive no. and consideration I'm of people sorry. on campus. If that's your motion, I won't be supporting that. Well, that's fine. I think since this is contentious, why don't we take a, um, why don't we, why doesn't the board take a vote on this? It's, okay. <laughs> Mr. Sure. Chairman, and if we could take this one, one bit at a time. I think you're going to need a, a, maybe some multiple motions. There's been a lot, some discussion okay. on two of them. Okay. Uh, so we, we, I, if I understood you correctly, you wanted to change the interim uh, president announcement so that it is, it's not a range of, of pay but it is, it is. Uh, let me do this one. Matt, let me make a motion for page one. Can I make a motion for page yes. one? Yeah, okay. let, let's keep it, do one thing at a time. Otherwise well, that's it's gonna fine. get so confusing, nobody will understand it. Fair enough, fair enough. So page one, the correction at the top of the page under opening date would be October 13th. Under closing date, very, very Mr. Good. Chairman, that's already one been passed. The only other change I think that you wanted on that uh, that was discussed was changing the range from 180 to, to two, it would be. To 180. Right. Okay. Okay, so I'm just confirming. Opening date, we have October 13th. Closing date, we have five o'clock on Thursday, October 21st. 
In the next paragraph, it's changed from uh, November to October. And Go then ahead. the compensation would be changed to $180,000. Okay. Do I, I, do I need a motion? motion? You need a motion for the 180K. I, I'm is, that, is that the only thing I need is a motion for the 180K, correct? I believe so. Okay, thank you. I motion that the salary be fixed at 180 well, I have a, a motion for the salary to be, a, uh, instead of a range, to just be at $180,000. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a second. Any further comment or questions on that? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All right, the motion carries. Okay, so we're done with page one. Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, anything you would do on this would be uh, to change the position description. Yes, sir. Just slightly. Um, I'm, I make I make a motion. The only, only other thing I'd like to do with the posting on pages two and three is I make a motion on page two of three on the second dark bullet under education experience to strike the words administration slash senior leadership. I second that. Discussion, Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. You know, I, I am just completely uncomfortable with that. I, I, I mean, you have really, you will put this institution in the position of really having someone walk through the door that's had no experience whatsoever in running this institution. And we have qualified people to pick from at a higher level, at that administration level. And I just, I couldn't imagine why we would ever strike those crucial words from a job description for a college president. We won't do that. I can guarantee you in the national search, why would we even consider something like that? This is a professional organization that requires a professional manager. It's not for someone to just come out of the out of the classroom and step right into administration. I completely disagree with this. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Trustee Howard. Um, I guess I'll probably sound like an echo to Christie's comments, but when I look at this um, position description, what we're looking for is somebody to step into an administration position and not just any administration position, it's the top administration position. And so for the period of time that they occupy that position, um, they're gonna be in charge of this institution. And to strike the words um, minimum or strike the words uh, higher education administration is absolutely inconsistent with what we're trying to do here. When we say required minimum qualifications, it's to try and get people to apply who have the qualifications to step into the administration role and do that as quickly as possible so as not to do further damage to this institution. I am I am adamantly opposed to striking um, those words, um, higher education administration. Oh, Trustee Howard, just for clarification, the words higher education were not being struck. But it's administration. administration. Yeah. I mean, higher, well, higher education. Part of higher education is, uh, um, it, does, it doesn't mean much without the word administration behind it. Okay. You know, May I ask you just a moment. Try, I want to comp, I want to work I want to work here I want to work with you guys on a compromise uh, if we can we can find common ground and there's a couple of things I've not gone after here uh, I've already mentioned a couple and I've even said okay I'll go with the five years versus the three so I either I'm either going to continue on to strike those three words or if there's a way we could phrase that and if you want it to be under 
you know, like preferred, but it's a duplication. We've already got progressive senior level administrative experience as one of the preferred experiences. So I, I think we're redundant anyway. So uh, unless you can give me something that, 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 that makes sense across both those, I, I, I'm gonna continue to strike those three words because I already have it again under preferred. It's duplicative already. And I, I feel like I've tried to come this way on about three things. Um, that's the only thing I've asked for Mr. on this Chair, entire pages two and three. Preferred and required are clearly two different things. And Dr. Burns has been trying to make a comment. I'd like to hear what she oh, I'm sorry. has to say. Sorry, Dr. Burns. Trustee Van Fuji, Chair Van Fuji, excuse me. If I may just make a couple of comments on particularly bullet point number two, a minimum of five years of experience in higher education administration. Senior leader slash senior leadership required. Um, first of all, I would point out that that line would probably appear in 99.9% of all presidential um, profiles or presidential job descriptions in the United States. I do not think you would ever find a profile that would not include that language. I also would draw to your attention that if you remove that from that, the qualifications for our president would be less than the qualifications for any of the other senior leaders at the college, the three vice presidents who are currently serving. The job descriptions for those positions and the um, positions for the, the position for the president has been consistent um, for, for, for multiple years. Those requirements are quite standard. Um, Trustee McKenzie brought up earlier um, the, the concern that we have currently with accreditation. I think that by changing the requirements for our president to be inconsistent and less than the requirements for the current vice president's positions would certainly not be a practice that would be consistent with North Idaho College's, um, let me change that, would not be consistent with the practice North Idaho College has engaged in, in hiring presidents and senior leaders for at least the past 20 years. I can speak to that very clearly. And so it, makes me anxious to think about making a decision for an interim position that could impact us from multiple perspectives moving mm -hmm. forward. Again, this is a temporary six month position. Keeping the requirements consistent is so important, not only to provide the leadership for this institution, but certainly in terms of how the accrediting body is going to be looking at these kind of decisions as we provide a report for them in August of 2020. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you, sorry. Right. Trustee McKinley. I feel very confident in the wisdom of this board to choose someone who's very qualified um, to run this institution. And um, I think the fact that we're fighting over required and preferred is almost a, a nuance to where what we're talking about is um, not trusting this board to choose someone to run this institution who's qualified. So I, I support this uh, motion, yeah. All right. Well, it's my, my motion, so I guess I'll make one last comment, then we'll put it to a vote. Um, I, I appreciate, and Christy, I appreciate your concerns. I do. Here's the last thing I'll say. What we're putting on here, we're going to get candidates. And yes to trustee mckenzie's point then we're all going to have the opportunity to look and, and and we're going to be able to choose hopefully a very qualified candidate to be our president so the striking of these words in my humble opinion just opens up our our pool of people that we get to review and see and then from that pool we're still going to have all the things that we're looking at and I, I think we'll be fine to make a good decision at that point. I don't think that the striking of those three words is gonna 
doom us to hiring an incompetent person or an unqualified person. Mr. Chair? Bigger picture than that. Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, Trustee Howard. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to comment on the, the, the position that the trustees can make an informed decision um, without these um, qualifications. Quite frankly, if that was the case, then we don't, why should we have any qualifications? You know, let's just, let's just open it up to anybody that wants to walk in off the street. These qualifications are important because they're a screening mechanism to provide us with a, um, a qualified cadre of applicants. And it's not, and we can't just rely upon our wisdom because quite frankly, uh, our wisdom doesn't necessarily go far enough. Thank you, Trustee Howard. All right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor of the motion to strike uh, the three words that I have mentioned, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. 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 That was two, I believe. Is Barnes still? Is Trustee Barnes. Trustee Barnes, are you still with us? I'm staying. <laughs> okay. Maybe we Mr. Still... Chair, I would make a motion. No, I think we're still. No, the motion has failed. I would make a motion to adopt the interim president search process as presented with the modifications on the salary. And that's it. Second. Is that to accept it? Mr. Chairman, uh, Trustee McKinsey, I, the, the previous motion failed because it did not get a majority. The current motion, as I understand it, is to accept the position description as presented, and and also it, and included the, the the salary that had been previously um, agreed to by the board, 180. I think is that right? That's so correct. So it's a little it's redundant on the on the price, but it is to uh, accept the position description as presented. Okay. Well, I, I have a question then. We have a motion, we have a second, and we have a discussion. What, what, what is the definition of administration senior leadership? Yeah. Because I, I have in my th notes here, I said, what is this? With a question mark. I, I would appreciate, Trustee Wood, uh, definitely more time to clarify that. Because senior, I mean, there's senior with uh, super, uh, Subordinates is the word I'm looking for. And how many subordinates? Is there position descriptions that say senior description? Well, generally, the president's cabinet is senior leadership. So you're saying VP cabinet only is who we're considering? Well, there are other members in the president's cabinet that are not titled as VPs. And Dr. Burns, maybe you could expand on that since you and Karen pulled this from um, national standards. Chair Bendigi, sure. Trustee McKenzie, um, I would agree with Trustee Wood's definition of senior le leadership. It is someone above a director level. Um, at times, a dean would also be considered a senior leader, depending on the organizational structure of a college or a university. But certainly, it, it absolutely includes um, anyone who serves on the president's cabinet, they are all considered senior leaders of the institution. Oh. And I would actually defer to Karen Hubbard um, to add any additional comments if she would like to regarding those definitions. Thank you, Karen. Chair Banducci, trustees, I would, I would, um, 
I would agree with Lita's description and would also offer that depending on the institution, those senior leadership positions could potentially be directors. Um, there was different titling convention in different schools uh, that they use in different makeup of, of a president's cabinet or that top leadership team, but I would interpret this as the same way as being uh, that, that top leadership team. So I feel like it's still uh, to get the original motion, like maybe we should separate these from a minimum of five years required and a higher education administration senior leadership preferred and, and separate because I feel like it's, not, it's a different motion than what you just motioned. That's my motion that has a second. But no, your motion was to accept it all as is. Correct. With the with the, you're if you're trying to amend my motion, then that's what you need to do. But I have a motion and a second. Okay, then I have an amendment to your motion that we separate the second bullet. If a minimum of five years of experience is required, and uh, the second, so a new bullet, uh, higher education administration senior leadership preferred. Well, that's completely changing my motion. We're, that's the same motion we were just at. It's not, not. It actually is. No, it's talking about, no, it's not. It's exactly the same <laughs> where we were just at. Let me make sure, let, let's make sure we understand what, he, what he's trying to say here. Okay, so we have the second. Mr. Chairman, if, if I might, um, we, we have a motion to accept the position description as presented. I think the amended motion is to- To not accept is, it as is. No, and I think the, the motion is to accept it as presented with the exception that the word required is removed from the last sentence of the second bullet point under education and experience. <laughs> Is that where you're going with that, Trustee McKenzie? That, that would do, yes. Yeah. I, I, in, in, in trying to, to uh, clarify that, I, I, I don't give an interpretation to that, whether that meets what, you, what you're intending or not. I'm just trying to state a motion, the, the amended motion, um, so that everybody understands what it is. I, so, I still move that, that drop required. We're still in discussion here, right? Yeah. Well, I, I would appreciate there's a no, second there's to no, my- There's a amendment. motion, but no second to the amended motion. The, the, the original motion that has that a second. Yeah. No. Okay. Trustee McKenzie, would you withdraw that motion for just a moment? Sure, sure. The amendment. Okay. I, I still want to have discussion on your motion, if I may. All right. Your motion, we've already actually, page one was done and it's been accepted. So your motion is actually slightly off because the only two pages that were still in question were pages two and three. And you said to accept the entire interim president posting as is, which, which as is was not correct. We had to do page one. So, so we've done that with a motion and we've corrected it now. Page two and three, we're looking at as, as was presented in the email. So I, I, I'm not sure the motion is, is quite right, but that's okay. We can come back to that. I, I guess I have a proposal here, or maybe I'd like to see. I, I, you're talking about taking the word required off possibly. Christy, is there any way, I mean, compromise here to take that and we keep it as a minimum of five years of experience. And if we keep it even in of experience in higher education, administration, senior leadership, but we drop the word required and we put that bullet as your top one under preferred experience. Mr. Chair, there is, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do which takes us right back to your original motion. But there is a huge difference. Well, I'm not striking the words though. I understand, but it's the same, it's the same outcome. 
um, the, the difference between preferred and, and required is night and day. And so I, I would not be comfortable in not having that basic requirement. This is the norm across the country. We're talking about a professional organization and I really can't wrap my head around why we would try to lower our standards lower than any of our current department heads or president's cabinet to have someone come in and be their boss and run this institution. I just, I can't wrap my head around why a board would go that direction. Well, we keep acting like that means that's who's gonna be hired. That's not necessarily the case. We, we may very well hire someone that meets every single thing exactly to this level. Well, Mr. Chair, if you look at the national organizations that do these job descriptions, there is a reason why there's minimum requirements because if you don't meet this minimum requirement, you're never going to be a college president because you have not attained the level of experience. That's why people go out and they try to, to, to better themselves and get to a certain level of experience. But you don't just ignore experience that's required. We, okay. we just can't do that. All right. Um, I'm going to make an amended motion. I'm going to make an amended motion that the bullet that says a minimum of five years of experience in higher education, administration slash senior leadership required that the word required be dropped off and that that be put under preferred experiences as, as one of the bullets under preferred experience. And that's different than my other motion, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that motion that, that we keep that, we keep it in there. We just drop the word off required because now it's gonna be under preferred experience. And that becomes a fourth bullet under preferred experience. So that's my amended motion. Do I have a, do I have a second? You have a second, and I'd like to go to discussion. Okay, we have a second. We have discussion. Is is there any other amendments after that amendment that you're considering? Me? Yeah. Nope. Okay. So after if we pass this, we can be done and open the job posting. So that's great news that tonight's almost over. Um, are you done with your discussion? I'm not. Okay. Uh, um. Oh yeah, sorry, no, got off my track. Um, people keep talking as if like we're hiring the candidate tonight, and we're we're not. Um, that's all I have to say right now. Go ahead, Chris. I got thrown off. Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. The the problem I have with your motion is it's essentially the same effect as your previous motion, even though we left the language in there, the effect is the same. That really there would be no minimum qualifications. It would just be preferred rather than required. And I just cannot go with that, knowing what's at stake with our accreditation, knowing that we have a large talent pool within the president's cabinet and with deans, people that actually have this level of experience to draw from and the whole idea that you wanna potentially get resumes from pretty much anybody on campus with, with these with minimum qualifications will really be a complete waste of time for all of us. And we have to, I think we have a duty as this board to select a qualified leader, especially at this critical point in time after all we've been through in the past year. I could not imagine getting rid of minimum qualifications. So I have to object to your motion. Okay. Trustee McKenzie. We're not definitely by no means getting rid of all minimum required uh, um, experience in education. So I, that's inaccurate at best. Um, that's it. Are you yeah, I'm done. Are you done? Okay. No, that's all right. I just wanted to ask. I'm tired. I thought you were gathering your thoughts. Okay. Well, I made a motion. What about my motion? Do we vote on that first? How does that work? This is an I amendment. Think? Right. So my motion just goes away. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. No, no, you have to vote on the amendment first. Okay. And then you go back to the original motion. Okay. So, no, I hadn't forgotten you. All right. <laughs> 
So, Mr. Right. Chairman, uh, Trustee Wood, the motion to amend is to amend your original motion, which was to accept the position description as is presented. The motion to amend is has moved the movement and and dropping the word required. So, keep all the language that the word required if it comes under preferred experience. Can I, can I say one more thing? Yeah, you, sure. We didn't call for the question. Uh, I think this new amendment is providing an opportunity to recognize how many leaders we have on campus and the quality and people that we have here. Mr. Chair, since we're still accepting discussion. I call the question after Christmas. Um, it, it isn't about the talent on this campus. It's about minimum requirements for the top job. And again, we are in a real bind with trying to meet minimum accreditation standards. We still have to show that we're working toward a professional institution. And I, I, could, I can't caution you enough. This is the wrong way to go. Just these qualifications have been put out for us by our HR and their national standards. Why we would deviate and not want those kind of qualifications is beyond me. And I just cannot support that. I have a response here. Mr. McKenzie. Oh, I'm, I'm aware that we have people on campus here who were actually prior presidents of community colleges. So I, I think as it's written right now, that it's gonna be excluding. Um, and I'm not saying that I, I have them in mind, but that, that, that that's what I'm, I'm thinking went by this amendment. So I think it's important that it passes. Okay. I'm gonna make the last comment and then I'm gonna call for the question. I, I wanna expand the pool. I wanna open it up. It's supposed to be an internal search on the campus. It doesn't mean who we're gonna pick. I think we're gonna be fine. I think at the end of the day, we're gonna pick somebody, a quality person. And I think we're fine. And I think we're fine if we approve my amendment and the language will be fine. It's in there. We've got the standards, we'll work with it. So I call for the question. All those in favor of the amended motion Please say aye. 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 All those, all those opposed, please say nay. 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 Chair will vote aye. Motion, amended motion carries three to two. Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, you have amended the original motion was to accept the position description. Um, now it is to accept the position description as changed amended. by the amendment. So you need to vote on the original motion. Yes, we do. All those in favor, please say aye. That, that, is to, that means the changes we made tonight. That's correct. Getting the, okay. That incorporates the amendment to the original motion. So uh, aye. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Chair votes aye. Uh, motion carries. Three. We'll take one breath here for a moment. We'll drop the vote. I don't know that I should address your turn directly. But I'd like to know if there's anything else that she needs to classify from the first session. She has all the information that she needs to before. Thank you. Mr. Lyons, do you have everything that you need, sir? I believe so. All right. And all right. We are at the end of the new business section. I don't believe there's anything else that needs to be addressed at this time. We'll call this meeting adjourned. Everybody, please be safe going home.